Okay, so here we're going to learn some of our basic differentiation rules. We've been looking a lot at our definitions of derivative, um, but ultimately speaking, as we said kind of from the beginning, our goal is to eventually get to the point where we don't have to walk through the whole definition, that we can shortcut it using some of the rules we're about to learn. Um, and so here we go. The first rule is power rule. Now my recommendation is, if you are, are watching this for the first time, to after we do a couple together, pause the video, try it on your own, restart the video when you're ready to check your answer or um, if you get stuck and need kind of a short explanation or a hint as to the next step. Um, but ultimately speaking, you do want to make sure that you give yourself some practice on your own so that it's not just you kind of watching me do it all the way through and never actually figuring out can you do power rule without me. Okay, so pause the video at some point to give yourself your own practice. Okay, but here we go. So taking the derivative, power rule says that if I have a function raised to some exponent, that to take its derivative, we would bring this exponent down, so the n would come down in front as a coefficient, we'd leave the base alone, whatever the base was, and we'd subtract one from the exponent. Okay, what this looks like is this. Example one, find the derivative of y equals x to the fifth. Okay, because we are in this form of a base raised to some exponent, I can use power rule. If I wasn't in this form, I'd have to do some sort of manipulation in order to do power rule, but I, I'm good to go. So I'm going to take my n, my exponent, I'm going to bring it down in front. So this 5 is going to get brought down in front. The base is going to be left alone, right? The x stays x. And I'm going to subtract 1 from my exponent. So this 5 minus 1 becomes 4. And that's my derivative. Okay. Let's do a couple more. Example 2. Find the derivative. of g of x, oops, I forgot that out. Okay, of g of x equals the cube root of x squared. <coughs> okay. Unfortunately, in this form, we are not purely an x to some exponent. This cube root throws us off a little bit. We still can use power rule, but we first have to manipulate this function to rewrite this function so it takes this form. Meaning we have to ask ourselves, well, how do I rewrite this cube root so that it's an exponent and not a root? Or at least not a shown root. Well, cube root remember means a or a root means a fraction in the exponent. So a cube root would tell me that my exponent is a third of some sort. And then the fact that we are x squared tells me that my exponent is x to the two-thirds. If it was just a cube root, no x squared, we'd be one-third. Now we're in power rule form, so now we can take the derivative, which is to bring that exponent down in front. So two-thirds is going to come down in front. Leave the base alone and subtract one from the exponent. Two-thirds minus one is negative one-third. And that is your answer. The only other thing you could do is rewrite this x so that the, we didn't have a negative exponent. So we could rewrite it like this if we wanted to. Or we could also potentially rewrite this x to the one-third as a cube root. That would also be a viable option. Like that. Okay. Okay, a couple more. Example three. Let's do find, let's do the slope of the line tangent to, and let's do f of x equals 1 over x cubed at the point to one eighth. 
Remember that at some point, once you've seen a couple, you really should pause the video. You really should try it on your own um, just to make sure you've got it. Okay. So slope of the line tangent. When we see anything about slope or tangent, our brain should cue that probably something about a derivative is at play. And in this case, the slope of the line tangent actually is a derivative. So we are doing a derivative here. We're all just also going to plug in our x. Okay. Unfortunately, this is not in power rule form, because again, to be in power rule form, we have to be x to some exponent. And in this case, we are 1 over x to some exponent. And so I do need to rewrite this which means this is x to the negative 3. Now we're in power rule form, so now we can take the derivative. Okay, bringing that negative 3 down in front, leaving the base alone, subtracting 1 from the exponent. My derivative is either negative 3x to the negative 4 or negative 3 over x to the 4th. And in this case, I do give you a point, so we are asked to actually find the slope at that point 2. So this would be plugging 2 into my derivative, negative 3 over 2 to the 4th, which is negative 3 over 16. And let's go ahead and do one more. Again, if you haven't already paused the video, I might recommend pausing it, giving it a shot on your own, restarting it when you are ready. Find the slope of the line tangent. To g of x equals x to the 5 fourths at the point 1, 1. Okay. So again, slope or tangent needs to cue derivative. We are in power rule form, so we are good to go. And so we would have our g prime of x equals, bring that exponent down in front, Leave the base alone and subtracting 1 from the exponent. 5 fourths minus 1 is 1 fourth. And so that's my answer. The only other way I could potentially write this is 5 fourths times the fourth root of x. Rem which remember is what a fraction of the exponent is, that's a root. Or I suppose I guess the other way you could write it is with either this x to the 1 fourth or this fourth root of x up next to the 5. That would also be a viable option. Okay, plugging in our 1 then, we have one, g prime of 1, plugging it in, is 5 fourths times the fourth root of 1. The fourth root of 1 is 1, and so my slope is 5 fourths. Okay, and so that's the first of our basic differentiation rules. The second one. We're only actually going to do one example of the second one because all of the answers happen to be the same. Okay? Our second basic differentiation rule is the constant rule. Which is how we take the derivative of a constant. Now I do want to make sure we are, are recognizing that there's a difference between constant and what we'll look at next which is a constant multiple. A constant would be like 7. A constant multiple or coefficient would be like 7x cubed. These are treated differently. So right here with our constants, we're looking at something where it's like just 7 or just negative 2 or something along those lines. Okay? And the derivative of a constant is 0. Which is why I said we're only actually going to do one. Now I do want to make sure we recognize why it is zero. Um, so for example, let's take this seven up here. This would be y equals seven. If I asked you to take the derivative of seven, derivative is the same thing, remember, as slope. So if I asked you for the derivative of y equals seven, I'm asking you for the slope 
of y equals 7. Well, what does y equals 7 look like on a graph? It looks like this, right? A horizontal line through y equals 7. And what is its slope? 0. Okay? So we'll, we'll go ahead and put 1 into our notes, but then we're moving on because all the answers are 0. Find the derivative of f of x equals 5 and our derivative is 0. So remember 5 would also be a horizontal line, so its derivative, its slope would be 0. Okay, next up we have our constant multiple rule. So now we're talking about that 7x cubed, where the constant is not by itself, but is in a instead multiplied to a function, to a variable of some sort. Um, it's a coefficient, we should say. Okay, and so the derivative of a constant like 5 or 7 or negative 3 multiplied to some function, what this rule tells us is that the constant will just hang out. We don't actually do anything to it. And then we take the derivative of the function itself. Okay? And so what this looks like is this. Find the derivative of y equals 5 times the cube root of x. Okay, well we can't take the derivative of cube root of x, or I should say we can't take, we can't use power rule on cube root of x, but we can if we manipulate it. So cube root of x, remember, is the same thing as x to the one-third. Okay, and so then for our derivative, we notice we have a 5 being multiplied to that function. That means the 5 is just going to hang out. I'm not going to do anything to it. It's going to stay with my problem. And I'm going to take the derivative, or use power rule, on this x to the 1 third, which means bringing the 1 third down in front. It's going to be with the 5 there, leaving the base alone and subtracting one from the exponent. And we've got our answer. The only other thing we might do is rewrite the function without our negative exponent. Okay. Let's do a couple more. Example two. Find the derivative of h of x equals 7x. Remember that at some point, so we're going to do three more in this video, this one and two others. At some point, make sure you pause the video and give this one a shot on your own. Okay? Okay? So we have h of x equals 7x. So this is power rule. Okay? Our 7 is just going to hang out. This exponent is 1, so I'm going to bring that 1 down in front. 7 times 1 is just 7. Leave the base alone and subtract 1 from the exponent. 1 minus 1 is 0. Well, x to the 0 is the same thing as 1, and so my slope, or my derivative, is 1. And technically speaking, you already knew this. Okay? Because take a look at these directions again. Find the derivative, aka find the slope, and then look at what your function was. What type of function is this? It's a line, right? I could write this as y equals mx plus b, okay, which would be y equals 7x plus 0. Well, my slope here, aka my derivative, is 7. So even besides using power rule, we knew our derivative was 7 because derivative is slope and the slope of this function is 7. Okay, just for the record. Okay, let's do another. Find the derivative of 
of f of x equals x to the fourth over three. Okay, we're gonna do one more after this one. So again, at some point, pause the video, give it a shot on your own. Okay, so this one, its derivative is using the constant multiple rule because my constant in this case is actually one third. When we start throwing in quotient rule, people a lot of times will look at this function and want to do quotient rule on it, but three does not have any variables in it, meaning it's not its own constant. This three in the denominator is a coefficient of one third. So it's just gonna hang out. The derivative of x to the fourth then is, we'll bring down the four, leave the base alone, subtract one from the exponent. And we have our answer. Okay, last one, example four. Find the derivative of y equals 2x squared. Okay, so this is constant multiple rule, so we have dy dx. This two is just gonna hang out, it's a coefficient. So we're doing power rule on x squared, so the exponent is gonna come down in front, two times two is four. Leave the base alone, subtract one from the exponent. And so this derivative is 4x. Okay. Two more basic differentiation rules. We've got, or three, again, if you call the last one two different ones. Um, we've got our sum and difference rules. So we use these rules. Anytime we have two functions that are added or subtracted from each other. And what this rule tells us is that as long as there is a plus or a minus, nothing else, multiply or divide have their own rules, but as long as there's a plus or a minus between two functions, I could take the derivative of the first and after I'm done with that, then either keep the addition or subtraction, and then take the derivative of the second, that they have no impact on each other. That f and g live in their own little worlds, and so I can take their derivatives just one at a time. And so this looks like this. Find the derivative of y equals x cubed plus 4x squared minus root x plus 3. Okay. So we are only going to do four of these. So again, at some point, pause the video, try it on your own. But here we go. So derivative dy dx. I see I have a bunch of pluses and minuses, so I'm gonna treat each of these terms as their own. So x cubed first, the derivative of x squared, bring down the three, leave the base alone, subtract one from the exponent. The derivative of x cubed is three x squared. Okay, then plus our four x squared. So the four is just a coefficient, so it's gonna hang out. We're gonna bring down that two, so we have eight. Leave the base alone subtract one from the exponent, which would be one. This x to the, or the root x is momentarily a slight issue, except remember that I can rewrite this root x as x to the one half, and then I can apply power rule on it. So we have our minus, and then power rule, bring down the one half, leave the base alone, subtract one from the exponent. Then we have plus the derivative of three, which is zero. And so this is my derivative. The only other thing they might do is to rewrite that negative one half as either one over two root x or one over two times x to the one half. Okay, 
Next one. Find the derivative of f of x equals 4x minus the fifth root of x. So derivative f prime of x. Do, go ahead and do this 4x first. So the 4 is just a coefficient. It's just going to hang out. My exponent is 1. So I'm going to bring that 1 down in front. 4 times 1 is 4. Leave the base alone. And subtract 1 from the exponent. Okay, so this is just going to be 4. Then we have our minus. Remember that this can be rewritten as x to the 1 fifth. Okay, and so we're going to go ahead and bring down our 1 fifth, leave our base alone, and subtract 1 from the exponent, x to the negative 4 fifths. Okay, and so then you can either leave your answer like this, or technically speaking, you could get rid of that negative exponent by bringing it down to the denominator. Okay, two more. Again, one more time, at some point, make sure that you pause the video and try these on your own. Example three. Find the slope of the line tangent to g of x equals 3x squared plus 1 over x squared at the point negative 1, 4. Okay, so here we go. My slope of the line tangent, aka derivative, we have g prime of x equals the derivative of 3x squared, bringing down the 2, we would have 6. Leaving the base alone, subtracting 1 from the exponent, we are at 1. Or just 6x. The 1 over x squared can be rewritten as x to the negative 2. But I can do power rule. So bringing down that negative 2, leaving the base alone, subtracting 1 from the exponent, we get that our derivative is 6x minus 2 over x cubed. And in this one we do have a point. We're plugging in negative 1. So we have g prime of negative 1 equals 6 times negative 1 minus 2 over negative 1 cubed. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6 minus negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2, so the negatives would cancel, giving me positive 2. And negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Okay, and last one for this rule, example 4. We have find the slope of the line tangent. to h of x equals 5x cubed plus 4x squared minus 2x at x equals 2. Okay. So here we go. h prime of x equals 5x cubed derivative, bringing down that 3, we have 15, leaving the base alone, subtracting 1 from the exponent. Then plus, bringing that 2 down, 8, leaving the base alone, subtracting 1 from the exponent, which would be 1, minus 2, 
because bringing the 1 down, we have 2. And subtracting 1 from the exponent would give me x to the 0, which is just 1. And so my derivative of 2x is 2. Add x equals 2. My, sorry, at x equals 2, let me plug in 2. My derivative would be 15 times 2 squared plus 8 times 2 minus 2 which is 15 times 4 or 60 plus 8 times 2 or 16 minus 2 which is 74 which is a very very steep slope. Okay last rule or again <laughs> rules if you consider them different we have our sine and cosine rules, derivative of sine and cosine. Okay, so the derivative of sine x equals cosine x and the derivative of cosine x equals the negative of sine x. Which is why I kind of consider them one rule. I recognize they are, of course, two distinct rules, but they're so stinking similar um, that I, I tend to kind of view them as one. Okay, we are only going to do two examples of this one, which means I would recommend, after I put up the first one, even though you haven't seen or heard it walked through, I would pause the video and give it a shot because um, again there are only going to be two of this one. Okay. Example one, find the derivative of f of x equals 7x cubed, let me fix that three, 7x cubed minus cosine x plus pi squared. Okay, so there you go. Derivative f prime of x equals, we have power rule here, bringing down that 3, we are looking at 21, leaving the base alone is x, and subtracting 1 from the exponent would be 2 minus the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, so I make it positive sine x, and then plus the derivative of pi squared, so I specifically threw this one in because it's very tempting, people do it all the time, it's very tempting to say that the derivative of pi squared is 2 pi, I'm trying to use power rule on that pi, however pi is not a variable. Pi squared, if you plug that into your calculator, you get a number. Pi squared is a constant. The same way 7 is, and the same way that negative 3 is. Pi squared is a constant. If you graphed just y equals pi squared, none of the rest of this, you just graphed y equals pi squared, you'd get a horizontal line, meaning the derivative of pi squared, the slope of pi squared is 0, because pi squared is a constant. And so that's my derivative. Okay, one more. Example two, find the derivative of g of x equals five sine x plus cosine x minus seven pi. So this derivative, g prime of x equals, 5 is a coefficient, so it's just going to hang out. The derivative of sine is cosine, plus the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and minus the derivative of 7 pi is 0. Again, 7 pi is some value, you know, 21 point whatever, but it's a constant, meaning its derivative is 0.